Thank you, Liz. I'm super excited to be here with you and, and everyone that's involved in, in this competition. Uh, good luck. And uh, again, I'm excited. So you've had a really busy 2020. Your, your book, A Most Beautiful Thing, was made into, an, into a movie by actually a U.S. Olympic rower, Mary Mazio. Um, can you tell the people watching today what that story is about? Yeah, the story of A Most Beautiful Thing is, is my journey as a young teenager uh, in a community on the west side of Chicago, a place where talent is everywhere, but access and opportunity is not. You know, uh, a neighborhood that has a lot of gangs and, and drug activity and uh, also a lot of neglect and mistreatment uh, in the community. And, you know, I, I, I went to high school at Manly Career Academy and walked in the lunchroom one day and I saw a boat. I had no idea what, why that boat was there, but um, we uh, ran into a group of young adults who wanted to start the first all black high school rowing team. And uh, we were all nervous. There was a lot of fear. We didn't have access to swimming, so we had no idea how it was gonna work. But uh, as a young person, I believe that doing things afraid gets you to where you wanna go. And we heard so much about the sport and we got on some ergs and, and, and just pulled and pulled. And, and then finally, um, we found ourselves on the water for the first time. And on that water was pure beauty, right? Um, of course it was choppy and, 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 and scary at first, but once we build a connection, once we showed up, once we represented our, ourselves in our school, the magic happened in the boat and it was pure meditation. Uh, we, we found peace, serenity. We didn't experience everything that we experienced uh, in our neighborhood. It, we just needed that time to, to get away and, and we became a team and, and we started to compete and we trust our coaches and we trust the process and we became stronger and we became uh, uh, individuals that really, really not only wanted to uh, be great rowers, but great community members. And that was because of the coaches that we had. And, um, and so, you know, we went to regattas and it was amazing. It was fun. We learned a lot, experienced a lot of things that, um, that we didn't want to experience, but overall um, it, it completely changed our lives. And 20 years later, uh, we got back together in the boat, <laughs> old and all, and um, we rode again for our community and, and, and for our families and, uh, and, and united the community through the sport of rowing. That's great. And the fact that your book was made into a movie meant that you had the opportunity not only to be an author, but also to be a movie star. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to film a movie? It was amazing. It was golden. Um, it also was, was tough, right? We, it was a documentary, so we had to relive all the things that we went through uh, as young people, right? And it was uh, a lot of trauma, but also therapeutic in a way. But we understood that uh, the bigger picture was to start the conversation around access and opportunity, around race, around privilege. And, um, and we have saw that impact. And it was also fun, we, you know, we had Olympic coach Mike Tatey come out and, and work with us and got us a little faster than we were. And um, it, it, it was exciting. All the guys were like movie stars on set. And the cool thing is just being back on the water every day and, and, and you had the camera crew out there and people were driving by, honking their horns and, you know, and, and, and all that good stuff. And we had Common and Dwayne Wade and all these other uh, great um, Olympic uh, athletes involved. And so it was super exciting to be a part of and, and, uh, and to share it out to the world. One of the things that you probably had to relive as an adult was getting into rowing shape and getting ready to compete. What was it like getting back into shape as an adult? And what advice do you have for other former rowers who are looking to get back into a shape for a competition like this one? It was, uh, <laughs> it was exciting and frustrating to uh, start training for Chicago sprints. I think, you know, we're older now and 
Uh, you know, there's body aches and we're working all the time and, you know, and we have kids. And so it's a lot of distractions. But um, I would truly say that when you have a mission, right, when um, you're doing it not for a medal and you're doing it to unite the community, if you're doing it to show young people that there's a better way, you're showing, uh, you're doing it to show uh, also grade school kids that this sport is great and there's a lot of opportunities to come with it it makes the training that much better it motivates you when you have when you're really doing it for a cause uh when you're doing it for something bigger than yourself and so uh that part was exciting i think the frustrating part is just like again like people are a lot faster than you now and uh you go out there in the water and people would just look flawless right and 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 uh it, it can be frustrating if, if you can't get the scores that you want but you know, you're busy. So I would say that don't let the small distractions destroy your journey, right? You know, I remember learning how to ride a bike, you know, and 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 I was trying to get to the other end of the, the street and I would look at the bushes and I would end up there. So if you focus on the small things, right? If you smoke, focus on the small injuries or not being fast enough or or catching a crab, or if in, if it's indoor rowing, like not not uh, getting the scores that you want, you will end up there. But if you focus on the goals that you have on your paper, the goals that your coach set for you, you will end up there. So I would say, don't let the small distractions destroy your journey. It's a beautiful journey, and you will get to what you need to be. And I'd say, last thing, have fun, have have a good time doing it. You mentioned a few times the importance of the rowing community and also the importance of coaches. And that's something that a lot of people have not been able to access this past year because of COVID-19. What advice would you have for people who are struggling to find motivation or you know, find the, the strength to move forward when they don't have access to a community or to good coaching? Yeah, you know, for me, I think it's, you know, it, it is a virtual world, right? And and we have to be super creative, right? And and for me. It's, it's, it's the music I listen to, it's, it's going on YouTube and listen to motivational speeches, right? It's calling my old friends from high school, my old friends, uh, oh, you can call your old friends that you rode with in college and, and have a motivation session, Motivation Mondays, every week where you guys just kind of motivate each other and laugh and talk about uh, that, that, that tenacity that you had when you was young and, 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 and use that when you get on the machine the next day or that night, you know, and I think that we have to be uh, creative in that way. And I think as rowers, right, as rowers, uh, you know, we all, not maybe we all, I have experienced a crab and I think crabs come to stop us from moving forward, right? And I think COVID is, is this big crab for us that's trying to stop us from moving forward, but we're trained to sit tall and not let it knock us out of the boat, right? And keep going and, 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 and still build a community regardless of and row for each other in the boat outside of the boat and so motivate yourself remain positive um and but that's going to be through going out for a run uh taking a uh, yoga class virtually connecting with your friends listening to good music again and listening to motivational speak uh, speeches and reading good books you have a motto on your website it is rise represent repeat can you tell us a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, I think uh, the lessons that we learn in rowing is just as important outside of the boat that it is than it is inside of the boat. And everything I learned inside the boat, I always said to myself, how can I use these lessons outside of it? And so for me, you know, each of those things mean a couple of things to, to rise as a rower literally means re rise. We get up early in the morning, and it's early, but regardless of, we have to rise, right? And at the same time, that, that rise means regardless of, it, of choppy water, regardless of what we're going through every day, regardless of, of COVID, we still go to work. We still have to rise. We, we still have to get up and make things happen. And represent means that, you know, you show up. You, sh you just show up after you rise. And, and not only that, you represent yourself, your school, your family, right? We represent our sport, right? And, and the discipline and the teamwork and everything that comes with it. So as rowers, as, as men, as women, as um, athletes, we still have to represent, right? And, and repeat means literally we do it again the next day. And not only 
that we do, we rise and represent and do it again the next day, um, we ho hopefully we can leave a mark in such a way that the next generation can pick up these lessons uh, and do it 30, 40, 50 years from now. And, and that's the repeat part, making sure that we leave our mark and, 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 and that legacy continues. Just to talk a little bit more about that word represent, we have over 63 countries represented in this event. And for some countries, it might be the first uh, world rowing indoor championships that they've been able to attend because it's taking place in this virtual format. How important do you think it is to development of rowing in a country or in a part of the world to have someone from their country represented in the world championship finals? It's a beautiful thing, you know, just honestly, just rep as a young kid representing the west side of Chicago was great for that small community and what it meant to them to for us to be out there in the water to just represent our small neighborhood when we came back 20 years later and they all were out there is something that they still talk about today, something that motivated kids who strictly only played basketball to say, I want to try that now. So when you get together and, 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 and with people all over the world and then represent your country, that's even bigger. That's great for everyone, young people, older people, leadership. Uh, and, and I guarantee you when you do that and, and you have those photos and people are cheering you on, you're going to spark a fire in a lot of folks who, who didn't believe or didn't think that this can be for them. When they see you do it, when they see that representation, uh, you, you're on your way to, to make a history for your country. So it's super exciting. And um, um, uh, we're, we're, we're happy to, to cheer our people on and hopefully everyone can cheer those who are representing their country on. You work with a lot of different organizations to try and make rowing a more diverse and inclusive sport. What advice do you have for teams or clubs that are watching today that want to try and make their teams more inclusive? Yeah, uh, Liz, you know, one of my favorite quotes that I always use is that, you know, what I learned in rowing is that I can't do the work of eight people, but I need eight people to do the work and we get there much faster, right? And in that eight is, eight different individuals who come together, who different personalities, different heights, right? Maybe different cultures. And, and, and they, they, move, they make it work and they move together. And I think uh, for organization, it has to be people not only involved in the bow house, but people that are involved in the community, right? To be involved in the planning, right? Uh, to be involved on your board in your leadership. So I think a start is diversifying our, lead, our, our employees, our staff, our, our leadership, uh, our board members. And so get those different ideas um, on paper together. And then we will start engaging with the community, right? And I, I think for me, being able to see for the first time when the sport came to my school that there was a black coach, a white coach and a female coach uh, really changed uh, my perspective on things because I was raised by women. So to have a woman there was exciting. To have a coach that looked like me um, was exciting. And I'd say the second thing is to make sure that uh, the images, the decor uh, in the boathouse reflects the people that you're trying to bring in the boathouse, right? Uh, so people can feel comfortable. You want to make sure the boathouse is warm and welcoming for everyone. And, um, and, and I would say that you can't get up in the morning, wake up and say, all right, we're going to build this bridge and it's going to be diverse and it's going to be awesome. I think everyone has to wake up tomorrow, your whole team, and, and everyone has to lay one brick as perfect as they can. And then you have that bridge. And that brick for one person can be um, calling schools. For someone else, it's giving money for someone else's parents volunteering, right? When it comes to education or just being out there on the water, right? It's for someone taking DEI and anti-racism courses and, and teaching others what they learn. So if everyone can just lay one brick as perfect as they can, quickly we will have that bridge. And, um, and, and I, I will say that's a, that's, that's a start. 
Well, Arshay, thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to head back to the studio to watch some more racing, but I'm really looking forward to see what you do next. Yes, it's now on paperback, so uh, purchase it. <laughs> thank you, Liz. I'm pretty excited and uh, uh, happy to watch.